In this video, I want to walk you through how I built my timeline visualizer that I use in my position parameter video. The visualizer allows me to change code in a timeline and then have the duration and start time of the tweens shown in this visual timeline below. A little caveat, I build tools like this to serve my specific needs. They aren't built to be massively scalable or bulletproof. Still, you can learn a lot about the capabilities of GSAP as I show you the different methods that I used. All right, before I get into the code, I just want to show you that the entire visualizer, including the controls, is all built in Illustrator as an SVG, all right? I knew I only wanted to show three tweens with three layers in a timeline, and I wanted everything to scale nicely. So what you really need to know here is that for each one of these tween objects here, let me just double click to go into the timeline. Uh, I'm going to select this first one up here. You're going to see that we have tween two over here selected, all right? And each tween object has an ID of tween zero, tween one, or tween two. And each side, each one of these groups, um, there's some text, there's a thumbnail, and there's also this blue background, okay? And what we're going to do is take that rectangle and we're gonna stretch it to match the duration of each tween. And we're gonna take each tween element and move it so that its left edge represents its start time in this timeline. Uh, one very important thing to note is that in this layout here, each number for each second of animation is spaced 200 pixels apart, all right? So if I have a tween that's six seconds long, this blue rectangle is gonna be stretched out to be 1200 pixels wide. So knowing that, let's jump over to the code. All right, so over here in CodePen, I wanna show you that we have our SVG and our HTML, it scales all nicely. And I just wanna point out that we have these groups with the IDs of tween zero, tween one, and then we have tween two, all right? So that's what we just explored in Illustrator. And each one of these tween groups has a rectangle element like rect2 or rect1 or rect0 which is that blue rectangle which we're going to be stretching the width of okay so in basic terms we're going to take each tween element and move it based on the tween start time and we're going to take each inner rectangle element and stretch it based on the duration over in the javascript I have a pixels per second variable set up so that we can always multiply things like the duration of the tween times that value so that it stretches the right way. Our timeline animation is set up so that we have three tweens that all have the same duration now and they play in direct succession. I don't have any code in place yet to actually move those elements around. Uh, we have a callback on the animation so that the playhead thing down here, where are you, it moves. And we also have draggable set up so that we can actually drag it. Um, and the time element, let's just make this a little bit bigger, is this thing down here. And the max X is going to determine how far we can drag our draggable. I'm not gonna get into the draggable aspects of this, but uh, I definitely recommend check out draggable in the green sock docs. It makes it very easy to drag things. What I wanna focus on though is the getChildren method, which is going to allow us to get information about each tween in a timeline. So I'm gonna start out by just setting up a variable. I'm gonna call it children, and it's gonna be equal to what we get from the animation.getChildren method. In order to see what that's gonna give us, I'll do a console.log and the value of children. And now this gets really cool. We're going to run and we're going to find out, if I go to my dev tools, that we get this array here with three elements. Well, what could those elements be? Let's crack it open and we get three tweens, all right? So we now have access to each tween object, which means that we can call its duration and start time methods to get all the information that we need. To show that in practice, what we're going to do is build a little loop. I don't need this log anymore here, so what I'll do is I'll set up a variable for the number of children based on the length of that array, and we're going to have the loop code here. So let's just do something where I'm going to log out, let's say children, and we'll get each element based on that iterator, and I'll say dot start time, okay? And what that's gonna do when I run is we should hopefully see the start time of each tween. Since they're all one second long in playing in direct succession, we're just gonna get zero, one, and two. 
If I want to get the duration of each tween, I would call the duration method on each tween, and then I'm gonna just log out one, 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 one. All right, one, 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 just three of them, okay? So I can now pull each tween out of the timeline, basically, and get its start time and duration, and that's all we need to make this thing work. So instead of logging this information out, I'm going to do a gsap.set, and I'm gonna target those groups, remember, that have an ID of tween plus the value of i. So I'll get tween one, I'm sorry, tween zero, tween one, and tween two. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna set the x position based on children, the current one that we're dealing with here, we'll say dot start time. Now, when I run this, what we're going to find is that we're not gonna see anything really different, all right? Because remember, the start times we're getting are zero, one, and two, and right now that's zero, one, and two seconds, but we're displaying that as an X value in pixels. So this is where my pixels per second variable is gonna come in handy, remember? There's 200 pixels per every second of animation, all right? So when I run now, what we should hopefully see, voila, is each tween now starts at the proper time. All right, they play in direct succession. So when I drag the playhead over here, when I get to one second, boom, the circle tween's gonna play, and then boom, the square tween will play. And it's all beautifully accurate. The next thing we're gonna do is just stretch these out. Um, right now, uh, their durations just happen to be one second for each one, and they're each 200 pixels wide by default. So to prove to you this isn't working right now, let's just make the duration of the first tween two seconds. And if I hit run, you're gonna see that these things do not stretch out properly, okay? But the start time of the second tween is working perfectly, all right? Nice little surprise there. Don't you love stuff that's dynamic and that works? So. What we're gonna do for this is I'm going to do a gsap.set and I'm gonna target each one of those rectangles. All right, so we have the ID of rect plus the value of i. And here we're gonna change the width of each one of those. And we're going to say, hey, you know what? Uh, children, i. And we're gonna base the width on the duration of the tween and again, the duration is going to be two seconds, one second, whatever, but we don't just want one pixel, two pixels. We want to multiply that by pixels per second, which again is 200. So now when I run, this first tween should hopefully have its blue background stretched 200 pixels wide. Let's see. Haha, -ha! isn't that great? I think so. So now I can play this animation, and we can not only see it play, but we can see each tween start time and length represented perfectly down here. Let's make this last tween, I don't know, let's make it three seconds long and have it start exactly when the circle tween starts. How are we gonna do that? Oh, well, first let's change its duration to be three seconds. And if we want it to start exactly when the previous tween starts, you know from taking my courses, we're just going to use that less than sign there, and let's hit run. And there we go. We have our tween visualizer that's perfectly dynamic and works awesome. Now again, I told you, this serves my need for three simple tweens. If you want to be more dynamic and flexible, you would probably dynamically clone or create new elements for each tween and add them to the DOM or an SVG, and you can go really crazy with it. Now, I've only shown you how to get each tween out of a timeline, but I'm gonna recommend that you go to the Green Sock Docs and read more about Get Children because it does allow you to also return nested timelines. You can ignore timelines, you can ignore tweens, uh, you can get animations only after a certain time. So there's a bunch of different parameters we can load up into Get Children. I just used the default, which gave me all the tweens that I need, and there's some code samples in here as well. So hopefully this video opened you up to how just a simple method like Get Children allows you to inspect your timelines and pull out all the information that you need. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. If you want more free videos like this, subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter. For access to all my premium courses and exclusive demos, Join me in my creative coding club. Details below.